As we've been reporting, lawyers for Sam Bankman Freed delivered opening statements in his criminal trial Wednesday. Prosecutors have accused the former FTX CEO of misusing billions of dollars in customer funds. But as stunning as the collapse of one of the largest crypto exchanges was, so was the meteoric rise of the 31-year-old now facing federal charges. Author Michael Lewis had a front row seat capturing the highs and lows of the so-called crypto wonderkund. His book, Going Infinite, The Rise and Fall of a New Tycoon, is available now. And Michael Lewis joins me in studio. Michael, welcome. Good to have you here. Good to see you. Okay. What was the th story you thought you were telling when this started? Well, I, the way I go about my writing life is I kind of start with a character and a situation, and I worry about what the story is going to be later. And when I met him, I was introduced to him by someone who wanted me to evaluate him. Uh, I wasn't thinking of him as a subject. But after a couple hours with him, I said, I said basically, I don't know where this is going to go, but I'd like to just watch. And so I spent the better part of a year with him and with his organization, interviewing around him, interviewing his investors, all that. And I still didn't know where it was going until it collapsed. And, and so I didn't start writing it until January. When you first met him, which you recount at the very beginning of the book, um, did, what, which of your, you have some pretty good radar. Which of the radar was pinging and what wasn't? And what was so that initial? I, I can tell you what the kind of conceit, this never changed. Um, he seemed like walking social satire. That he'd gone from zero to $22.5 billion in net worth in like 18 months. No one knew who he was. The whole world was configuring itself around this new pile of money. American politics, American media, philanthropy, the financial system. And I thought, he's going to light up these systems. I and mean, I had this very curious character. He's got this very mathy, quantitative, unemotional way of, he's a Martian going into these places and trying to figure them out. And I'm gonna, the reader's going to have a glimpse of all this stuff and how the world works now through this pile of money. So that, and now when, he, when it all fell apart, he just added to the systems I had to describe because all of a sudden he's colliding with both the bankruptcy system and the system of justice. Right. I mean, I, not to steal from the reader, but when Anna Wintour is suddenly on his uh, <laughs> computer screen, you know that he's touching a real variety of systems. But he has no idea who she is. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and he doesn't know what the Met Gala is. And, and she wants him to, like, sponsor it. And, and he wears T-shirts and shorts and socks and doesn't wear anything else. Right. And disapproves of people looking too good. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, 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 no, I, so what I was thinking is this is just wonderful social satire. It's a way of, it's a, it's a window into various worlds. And so you're covering him and then all of a sudden, how does the book change once, once the charges drop? So, what, what, so this is true. You think I'm making this up. This is true. Two days before the charges drop, I was sitting down with a friend who I use as a story consultant, kind of famous film director. And I, my line to him was, you tell me why I should write this book because I'm thinking that I can't write this book because I don't have an ending and I don't know where it's going. And he said, when I described Sam and the stuff I'd seen, he said, this stuff is so good, it doesn't matter how it ends. Won't be a movie because you don't have a third act, but it, you can dance your way out of it in a book. And I was, I, didn't, I was skeptical. So I didn't have a plan. I had stuff. And once it all fell apart, I had a shape. I had an ending. I, I, my problem is as a writer, I can't start like the first sentence until I know the last sentence or let's say, until I think I do. I need to be able to go there. I need a destination. Yeah. And, I, and, and what happened was when the charges dropped, I had a destination. But, and did you, did it change you considerably or? Not really. I mean, I, he, what you have to understand is that he has, there was a dry run for which just happened that I knew about and then I already kind of thought this is definitely a chapter in the book. Yeah. Ends up being chapter five where he, almost, where he blows up a he, his hedge fund in 2018. Very similar circumstances. Half his colleagues think he's a crook. Half of them think he's stolen a bunch of money. Turns out after they leave, they find all the money. So uh, there was a, this was, the whole thing is in character. Yeah. That, the character didn't break. Crypto, cryptocurrencies, crypto exchanges um, are complicated. Uh, but the prosecutors say this is a simple story of fraud. Right. Is this a simple story or is this a complicated story? It's a story? complicated story. <laughs> I think it's a very complicated story. And it's the, so the, compl and the complications, which I've left for the reader to sort out a bit, is it's not like what happened. Like everybody agrees, like there's this giant pile of money, $10 billion, that was supposed to be in one place in cold storage, the customer's deposits, that was in another place in Sam's hot little hands in, in Alameda Research. The how and the why it happened that's the complicated part. 
And that's when you get to like intent. Like yeah. what, what was he intending? And I, you know, the trial will be about that. And I, I think it, the, the answer to that question arises out of the character and personality of Sam Bankman Freed. And so I presented that, left a hole for the reader to make their decision. Well, let me ask you that as the last question, which is as you paint this extraordinary picture of him doing, it feels like he's got this kaleidoscopic attention span, which is touching on all kinds of things. He's playing a video game while he's talking on the if, phone. If he was here right now, he'd be playing a video game and maybe checking his phone. Sure. And, while he's talking to you. And bored by all of it, yeah. probably. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so the question is, when I... The question is, if somebody like that is, and, and who also didn't keep his commitments, wasn't sure of his schedule, was often not where he was supposed to be, it seems obvious that that kind of person would kind of lose a billion here, a billion there. Or... Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't put your money with him, and I wouldn't put my money with him, but people put their money with him. Yeah. 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 Well. That's about not, nothing to do with intent. It's just like the nature of the character. And quite a character he is, and well-drawn. Michael Lewis, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Sure. The book is Going Infinite, The Rise and Fall of a New Tycoon.